Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Learn From Us podcast. As always, my dearest friend Paul is here. Dearest. One of my dearest. Could you rank me? Oh, boy. It'd be oh, tough. MJ texted me this morning. One of our other dear friends. Yeah, he wrote, it's pretty funny. He wrote, uh, <laughs> he wrote I'm going to need the name of your home builder. I heard this radio commercial for one stock retirement. They said 10,000 people have already become millionaires from it. Naturally, I sent all my money there. So I'm going to start. I'm going to get started on drawing up plans for my massive new house. <laughs> I was like, well, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Zero Is that chance. what he said? I said that. I said, you can't go wrong. Oh, of course not. <laughs> he goes, and I was waiting on it to end with, bought, brought to you by the good people at Stratton and Oakmont. <laughs> that's from Wolf of Yeah, Wolf. that's great. Um, then I thought, wouldn't it be funny if somebody actually started a firm and named it that and see if anybody caught yeah. on? We went to Dominican to look for houses. That's one of my questions. What are you doing down there? We were looking at houses. You know, it's funny. We, um, we were ready to buy a house. Um, Seth. Bye, bye, there, bye. There was a house in the water that was absolutely stunning. You're kidding. I got to see pictures. I'll show point. it to you. We were going to expand the kitchen. Mm-hmm. We were going to maybe add a fifth bedroom. They offered financing on the house. So I don't have to pay cash for that. That's the it's reason. Weird. I, it's funny. I told my brother, I said, listen, we're not going to buy down there. We're going to go look to, to, to sublease. And then this house has 90% LTV, 5% interest for 30 years. Well, slow down on those numbers. Sorry, 90% loan to value, which means I want to put 10% not down. Not 20. No. Put 10% down, 5% interest for 30 years. Locked. Seems pretty low or lowish. Then they started to get a little shady. So this is what they want to do. Go on. The reason we bailed on it is they said to us, so they do. So we said to them on the second day, we want to do our own leasing. Is that okay? They said, yeah, it's fine. You guys can do your own leasing and everything. So I said, fine. I want to rent the house for a night so I can stay in it. So I offered to pay, not saying, hey, guys, give me a night free because I might buy. You know, I wasn't being a jerk. Sure. I said, let me just pay for the one night. So I pay for the one night. Next day we get there and oh, the caveat occurs. If you guys lease that on your own, we still charge you a 20% management fee, even though you do all the work. And I was like, wait, what? They said, yeah. I was like, that, I've never heard of that in my entire life. So I asked for my money back. They said, no, they said, go scram. And we didn't stay there. So we built a deal. I'm like, guys, that's so shady. Like I can't buy a house here thinking you guys are going to be this shady. Wait a minute, who, how, how? Exactly. It, it, it absolutely blows my mind. The fact that you're stuttering. Is it in like a community? It is, but, and they rent out other houses in the community and they charge a 20% management fee, but we, we asked them, can we, manage, can we manage and lease our own house? They said, fine, but they still want to charge us a 20% management fee anyhow. Oh, I'm confused. Exactly. So, I mean, it, it makes absolutely zero sense. It makes absolutely zero sense. You must have been crushed. If, I mean, if you Not found- crushed. I was just annoyed going like, you know, and the funny thing is the house was more per square foot price. But the financing made it different. It was like, okay, well, now I don't have to go pay cash for this thing. What you did in Mexico? Pardon me? What you did, you did in Mexico. You had to pay cash. You yeah, you had to pay cash in Mexico. But this is a developer offering financing. So I was just like, well, whatever. But anyway, we looked at houses down there. It is beautiful, but it's not like Mexico. It's basically, if you're not in the water, you basically have no views of the water. Like one house they took us to, they said, oh, this is on the water, but it has amazing views. So I got there and I was like, which this way? Is, this is the definition of amazing. And I was like, they're all right. They're not, but I'm, you know, we're spoiled by Mexico. And I remember leaving the house going, is it possible we found the best place like to own and rent in the sense of for cost, um, you know, cost effectiveness. Did, there. did you feel bad because the deal got low? No, not at all. Normally you're pretty. Um... No, I, I, by the way, I didn't like, what I didn't like about the deal was that we, you know, you would think such a big caveat would be explained to us. Hey, can we manage? Yes, but we still charge you 20% management fee. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, I was even trying to draw an analogy to people going, I, I don't even get this. Like, I, it's like, if you know a realtor and they're like, oh, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know Can't how to explain it. Can't even come up with one. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Literally, I've told real estate people, they're like, uh, what? I'm like, yeah. They're like, how does that even work? I'm like, I don't know. I've never heard of this in my entire life. You weren't aware that Hillary Clinton was on Howard Stern. I was not aware of this. <clears throat> Um, I tell people I've listened to Howard's voice probably just as much as my own in my life. <laughs> like um, hours and hours of my life have been dedicated. Ninety six five in high school. When we were in high yeah, school. 90, every morning. And then when he switched over to Sirius in two thousand six, I was like a day one or I bought a lifetime subscription. Still day had, one. Day one. I mean, I was uh, I was in the car in the cold when he started his first day there in 2006, like six in the morning, I was in the car, like in my underwear, listening to the first day. I was so excited. Come on. Yeah. And they were, they were, uh, the production, <laughs> it was amazing. They were testing the mics and testing to see if it all worked. It was really rad. Um, but that was a long time ago. But, um, 
Yeah, a lot of people were really shocked that she was on there. And so I fired it up. A dear friend of ours, dear, everyone's dear to me now. Yeah. Well, they're very important to me. But a You're friend a of ours, uh, 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 yeah, a friend of ours, Harry, like, he's very democratic, loves these people. Joe. Well, it's and funny. Hillary. He said to me, one day, we once went to the bar one night. He goes, he goes, something about Joe Biden. He goes, well, you know, that'd be good for all of us. I go, well, why all of us? He goes, well, you know, all of us. I'm like, I don't have the same political views as you. He's like, oh, okay, gotcha. And you know, I don't say my, I'm Republican anymore. I say I'm libertarian, but yeah, you know. It's just funny, but anyways, go ahead. Well, I, it's I'm I'm more amazed nowadays when like uh, again growing up a Democrat, my parents being Democrats, all my friends being Democrats. Is your mom a Democrat? Thinking that like Republicans <laughs> are just foolish most of my yeah. life. I think they're foolish now too. Well, but I think Dems are foolish but too. But the vitriol so. that you have for Hillary Clinton, I'm usually shocked by. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I, what I, are your top five? I hate hers. It's not I hate. Here's the deal. Go on. She's, she's portrayed as a champion for women. Yeah. Okay, fine. I think there are much better champions for women out there than Hillary Clinton. Here's why. Who are some? Uh, well, before we get into that. Okay. She stayed with her husband, who was publicly cheating on her like crazy, publicly embarrassed her, everything. So why'd she stay with her husband? Um, I have no idea what's going on in their life. My opinion, career advancement. Now, am I assuming something? But- at the same token, why else stay with this guy? You know, have you ever had? Um, okay, that's number one. Have you ever had? Uh, you ever, ever had friends or couples where one cheated on the other and they stayed together? Um, yeah. However, I would. Um, when you go out there and you publicly profess that you are breaking the glass ceiling, and you're doing all these things for women, I'm like, you know, it's always funny with me, Bill Clinton. Everybody talks about how great all these men, women sure. talk about how great Bill Clinton is, and I'm just like, but. You know, they're like, uh, and there are, there are blatant stories of women saying Bill Clinton raped me and his wife, Hillary was like pressuring me to keep quiet. It's like, again, these are all stories, but at the same point, allegedly, allegedly where there's smoke, there's fire, et cetera. And I, again, I'm not trying to say Donald Trump. No. And it's, you know, somebody once said to me is like, uh, cause I did get upset during the election. And again, I didn't vote for Trump, but I get upset with the inconsistency of it. And so, you know, somebody wrote once like, well, just because Clinton did it doesn't make it right for Donald. I'm like, I'm not saying that makes it right. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is when it was happening with Bill, no Dems were ever saying, like, I didn't hear any Democratic women saying, what a terrible man. He's a misogynist. He's chauvinist. All these. It was just like, oh, he's a great guy. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I know there's people listening to this who are Dems and just go, oh, Paul, you don't get, maybe I don't get it. I don't know. I just, you know, I look at Barack Obama and I'm like, that should, Michelle Obama is somebody we should be revering way more than Hillary Clinton. And she's never held office. I don't care. Barack Obama is somebody we should be way more, you know, heralding than Laura Bush, George Bush. Those to me are a great couple. And the Obamas, these people are like couples we should all want to be like. Mm. You know what I mean? We don't have allegations of any impropriety or... They, they clearly seem to be very loving and very affectionate with each other and respectful. But when you have, when you're picking the Clintons as you're like, ah, come on. It's like saying the Trumps, you know what I mean? Like, why is Melania still with Donald? I mean, I don't get that. Why is she still with Donald? I mean, but at least, you know, she has no political ambitions. Yeah. You know, I look at that saying, okay, sounds good, whatever. But, you know, I once saw an interview with, with Bill Clinton, who's on a panel like, who do you respect most in the world? Oh, Hillary. It's like, and everybody's like clapping for him. Like, fuck you. Like, really? Like, it's just like, give me a break. This is so, it's just like if Donald said, you know, I really respect Melania a lot. Oh yeah, is that why you're trying to grab women by the put? You know what I mean? It's like, this doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> at least be honest, but at least be Charlie Sheen and say, uh, you know, I don't know who I respect because my wife lets me do whatever. I, I don't know. I just... The other thing is Hillary is blatantly hypocritical. A lot of politicians are. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to. Which one? St- which which stories stick for you? Um, her Walmart, her anti Walmart, yet being a shareholder and a uh, big shareholder. Not big shareholder, but, but she had a sizable chunk of Walmart stock, and she's bashing them, saying they ruin small business. It's like, oh, but you have no problem owning their stock. Um, in o- I remember in o six o seven, she campaigning saying, if you vote Democrat, gas prices will go down. Um, mortgages will go, uh, something, mortgages will be more affordable, et cetera. And then what happened in 07 and 08? Gas prices skyrocket. I mean, it's like, and the reason I don't like it is she couldn't have controlled gas prices. Yeah. Nobody can. It's supply and demand. It's like the only way we control it is doing what we're doing now. Let's go create other sources of creating energy. That's mm-hmm. the smartest way. 
people don't realize that the market will take care of itself if you give the market options, right? Mm. So why do we spit this venom? And again, for all you Dems out there, don't get your panties all in a bunch. Republicans are just as bad. You know, but, it, you know, I look at, and I'm not going to say at least. There are blatant, you know, hypocrisy on the Republican side too. That's why it's nice being libertarian. I'm sure there's, and I've told you before, there's libertarian hypocrisy, as I told you when I, you know, four. But either way, it's politics in general. Um, so anyways, in terms of Hillary, those just, you know, I think look at it going, there are stories of people, I know a person whose family um, was secret service to the, to the Clintons and the stories are just, they're terrible human beings. Like didn't care about you, didn't care about your time. If they went to a, if they went to a, um, a, um, there was once a story of, and I think this is a more popular story. Hillary went to a charity event and looked and literally pulled up and said, there's no money here. Let's get out of here. You know, things like that, as opposed to, well, I'm okay. I'm sure other politicians do that, but not when you're Hillary and say, I'm a champion for the people. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you can't really say that kind of thing. So either way, I just look at it and go, uh, there's far more women. Meg Whitman, I think she's a great woman to respect. She's not a Dem, so sorry guys. But in terms of the Dem side, just even, you know, I feel like, I feel like it's bad that we don't allow Republican women or conservative women to be champions for women. It's like, it's not allowed. It's almost like that's a terrible thing. It's like, why is that a terrible thing? Just because they think, just because they're pro-life, just because, you know what I mean? It's like, these things don't make sense to me, but either way, Meg Whitman, she's the former CEO of eBay and CEO of Hewlett Packard. I don't know what she does now though. But to me, that's much more of a woman, you know, we should be respecting because she's, she's not in the limelight. She's not I mean, she's very humble, it seems. She's worth a lot of money, but stays very humble. You don't see her parading anywhere going like, F these people kind of thing. The interview was um, pretty interesting. Captain Don would agree. He listened to it too. Is in it. He was, she was fairly, she was much more open than I thought she would be. Most pol politicians cover up. They, What'd she say? Um, she was talking about the night of, like she thought it would be a total sweep like everyone else. I and, thought so too. Um, I guess it come. I've been reading or watching some documentaries on that, and they were actually saying that, like, there were higher ups in the Democratic political campaigns that they, they knew that was going to, they had signs that that was going to happen. Come on. And they hid it from the public because they sort of thought that if, if we don't tell people, it's not going to, it's not going to If we don't happen. tell people, then. By the way, talk about hypocrisy. Hillary is all about the people getting their vote, but yet she and the Democratic Party, and it's barely, it's proven through emails, completely blocked Bernie Sanders' ability to win the nomination, even though he probably should have won the nomination. Yeah, I was seeing stuff about that. And then he basically, and then Bernie started supporting her. Well, you got to fall in line. Yeah, you do. You got to fall in line. And guess, guess what? I think the result would have been the same thing. I mean, I don't think Bernie beats Trump. The only difference is I would have thought, I would have thought that going into the election line, I'm like, Trump's going to beat Bernie because Bernie's a little too far left for even, you know, Democrats, I think. Yeah, she was saying that, like, she did call him. Who? Trump that night. Oh, she did. And Howard, I think, said something like, you know, obviously, like, what did he say? And she's like, he was just so shocked. I guess, I think it was true that, like, Melania was crying. 100%. Yeah. So I watched the 60 Minutes where his, his Facebook ads guy was interviewed. And he, 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 and they asked him, like, when did you think Trump was going to win? He's like, the week before on Wednesday, I said, Trump, you're going to win. He goes, what do you, like, he even said, he's like, Trump didn't believe me. Yeah. 100% that night, there was no way the Trumps thought they were winning that day. So it's weird to see someone who I really look up to, like Howard Stern. Um, What's his, I know he's more Democrat, isn't he? Or is he more libertarian? Well, what's funny is. Because um, he's friends with Trump. Yeah, he's had Trump on a hundred times. Yeah. Okay. So th what Don said was most of the people believe that, that Howard Stern is a Democrat, but he tries to hide it a little bit, which is probably good for a host. Like bring both, like, like Joe Rogan, he's yeah. pretty obvious about being a libertarian, but you know, he brought Bernie on, but anyways, go ahead. Um, so yeah, it's just to see someone who I look up to, like he like worships the ground Hillary Clinton walks on. I mean, he's very Stern adamant does? about it. Yeah. Very adamant about it. Wow. Um, and so to hear such different opinions about someone, um, it's, it's weird for me to hear it from you and to hear it from Listen, him. Listen, of course, I have bias of, you know, growing. I mean, it's very fortunate that we have the ability to, I have the ability to bash Trump and bash the left at the same time, right? I'm very fortunate in that because it, it, it lends credibility to myself, I believe. 
Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, it's funny. I bring this up, the, the, the caveat between two opinions, right? Yep. Um, which you, you don't say caveat. You say caveat. Oh, yeah. Caveat. Um, yeah. I, 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 Let's ask John Dyer what the uh, correct pronunciation of that is. John, why don't you text me right now and say, <laughs> um, give me a voice memo. It says caveat or caveat. So like the two drastically different opinions are weighing in my mind. Okay. Yeah. But they're opinions. Yeah. And the same thing kind of goes for political parties, right? Of I've course. asked you in the past, like, well, wait a minute. If the Republicans are so confident that the trickle down economics is the way to go, why can't we just prove it and move on? And the same thing I'd say on the other side. Right. Right. And it's like, so when I ask you, why can't it be proven after a hundred years of, of, of financial governing, governing, uh, why can't it, why is it not a clear line in the sand? What works best? Because we never have the one system trying to go through. It's always, that's why I always say Democrats, Republicans are the same. Cause even though Republicans talk about lower, my buddy, George W. Bush, love the guy. But the one thing is his tax cuts were early tax cuts. He then increased the number of IRS audits. Like he went and made the IRS stronger. So it was kind of like, listen, I'm going to, on the public side, say, hey, here are all these tax cuts. And then on the private side, I'm going to say, listen, IRS, you need to get a little more aggressive with these people. That way we can get that revenue back up. So this all ties in to like different opinions. And uh-huh. this all ties into, we were at your house a few, uh, a few months ago with a dear, fr- another dear friend. Everyone's dear. dear Why do I keep saying that? I'm a freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, a friend of ours. And you met him that night. The topic came up, and he and I said, yeah, like, I can't understand the ideas of, like, global warming. And he looked at you and said, Paul, do you believe in global warming? And I was like, Beth was there. Yeah. I kept my mouth shut. But as a Ph.D. scientist, when someone says, do you believe, I'm like, this isn't fucking Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, And you remember what I said about global warming? I, well, of course I don't, but go ahead. I, mean, I was too shocked to, like. I've always said the science appears to me and here's the difference you ready yeah this came to me well there's more to it than that but I, I don't think this person really knows the idea of two key words that, that go on in science and it's called peer review have you heard of this of course i have of course you think more normal people have heard of this no <clears throat> i say of course because i read stuff like that you know what i mean so of, you of know course. Yeah, okay so the key i think that maybe our friend might not understand is that just like in everything, baseball, politics, there's a race to the top. People can get famous and make a lot of money for doing great things. Whether you're making a movie, doing a podcast, being a president, there's a lot of money to be made. Uh, And so when I think about, this might be a stretch, but when I think about political parties and how we're just like so drastically different. Supposedly. Right? Like at least our thought process. Yeah. And the and then so, but I've seen these races in science. So I, I think I didn't. Mean, I don't know how I switched this to global warming, but it was just coming to me that like I would say global warmer warming doubters say that the scientific community they're in cahoots to get funding. They've drummed up this idea so that somehow they'll get funding. Now these same people trust scientists on every other aspect of their entire lives, medication food preservatives, their ideas on space. See, the funny part is I don't agree with that. Oh, well. And that's what makes me not trust them, though. I would say a majority of people, <laughs> you trust when you take an aspirin 1, from- 1,000%. It bothers me when people go, no, I'm going to believe that Jesus is going to make me stronger. It's like, um- You trust vaccines. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of things these people, <laughs> there's a lot of things in people they, they like, but this one particular topic of global warming- Of course, it's bias. The whole world has gone in cahoots. But here's the key, is amongst the scientific community- there are varying opinions. But it's vastly on one side. No, here's the, here's the key, though. Of those varying opinions, when someone comes out and says something, like, I, I don't think people understand, it's like when one scientist says, yep, here's my findings on global warming. All of your enemies in the scientific world... Try to poke holes. Yes. And, but they have to agree with you before you- this is published. Unlike politics, if you say trickle-down's the best... Yeah. Before you can even say that, the Democrats would have to agree. That's peer review. So can I explain, though, about... Go on. Am why? I, am I envisioning this wrong? Go on. No, I think you're right. With science and with global warming, the most common argument I hear back about global warming is, 
the earth has always fluctuated in temperature. And the answer to that, the, the, the response to that is, that is true. Absolutely. We're not trying to argue that. Right. The issue I have is, guys, we can't deny, though, that the earth temperature has changed even faster over the last 30 and 40, 50 years when, since we started using fossil fuels so much. Sure. Right? Yeah. To your point about the ozone layer, you were right. I did the research on it. You were right about that. 100%. It was like, okay, I read that every 10 years, the ozone layer is getting 3%. The ozone hole is getting 3% smaller. Mm-hmm. Okay, why? Because we got rid of like 99% of all of these things that we're doing bad Chlor- stuff. Chlorofluorocarbons. Is sure. What was Whatever. All you scientists can do that. Yeah. Congratulations. You got a PhD in order to be able to say chlorofloral. <laughs> <laughs> chlorofloral. <laughs> Fluoro. Um, um, to, to, no, but, but it just hit me like... The difference with politics is we don't agree on anything and we're just fighting the whole time. With scientists, if we don't agree, nothing is actually, you can't, the, your findings go up for peer review. Then your enemies have to okay it before it gets published. I wouldn't say enemies, but your peers. No, they're not peers though. They really are, and they, they are the vitriol between nerdy scientists in, you, you, you know what I mean? In finding that Listen. cure. When I or hear finding that fact, when I hear the Bible thumpers telling me that the earth is 6,000 years old and they tell me that, uh, that global warming doesn't exist. I mean, you know what my, my response you, to that. You'd be amazed. <laughs> you'd be amazed at the stories I hear from old chemists about people standing up in mid, mid like, uh, uh, keynote, keynote speakers and finding arguments at, at national conventions between guys. And then at some point they have to say, yep, you know what? You are right. My findings found it as well. And you are. So right. can I make a comment though? Go on. Have scientists been wrong? Um, By the way, yeah. I'm not defending the. Anti- I'm just sitting there saying. Sure. The only problem I have is the anti-global warming people. They're they're hin- they're hinging everything on all these scientists are wrong. Is it possible? Sure. We just found a black hole that was ten times larger or something crazy like that. I think it was three and a half times larger than they thought was even possible. Yeah. They're like, yes, a, a black hole can never be more than. 20 AUs or something like that. I don't remember what the size was. And then they found out it was 70. It's like, oh, okay, well, we whoops. were wrong. Yeah. yeah, whoops. But you know what? It's not like we sat there and said black holes exist. And all of a sudden we found out, oh, wait a second, black holes don't really exist. I mean, it's not that, it's not like that big of a difference. So you're right about with politics. Like how can we know, uh, how do we not know there's something that works? Well, it's because the government is so convoluted and big and there's so many things sure. that's a, but I just look at it and say well let's use logic then let's use lo- just like I think global warming if you look at the data even if you're not smart mm-hmm. if you look at the data you go okay something happened in the 60s and 70s that all of a sudden you see this and all of a sudden you see this mm-hmm. again that's not scientific of me that's just me being common sense going okay what happened here because remember Correlation, causation doesn't mean correlation or the other way around. Correlation doesn't mean causation, right? But at the same token, the, our, the response I make to everybody who hates the global warming argument is, why is it bad that we want to use less fuel? Why is that a bad thing? Yeah. We, we do acknowledge there's smog in this world, right? Nobody can deny there's smog. Go to Beijing, go to LA, yep. there is smog. If there's a possibility for us to be able to eliminate that, Let's do it. Now, what's going to happen in 20 years is we're all going to be arguing about how electrical farms are sure. killing the environment. And I'd be like, guys, then let's go figure out about it. That's what the great thing about technology is. As time goes on, we get better at doing things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always joke about diets. 25 years ago, fat was the worst thing possible. Yeah. Now, talk like to bodybuilders. No, fat's good for us. Okay. Yeah. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is bad. No, it turns out that cholesterol is bad if it comes from saturated. If saturated fats do worse for your arteries than cholesterol, just itself. Yeah. If it's cholesterol associated with saturated fat, that's a problem. Okay. So we learn all these things as time goes on. Everybody has their effing it. But look at look at weight look at, look at weightlifting. There's science there. Yet yeah, you talk to uh, ten weightlifters, they all do a different thing for their for their yeah. regimens, right? But there's science there. Yeah. How do we do? I don't know. At the end of the day, you've got to sit there and realize like what bias do you have. Like, Seth, what bias do you have? I mean, I really dislike Pittsburgh Steelers fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, um, uh, yeah, no, we, in terms of world, in terms of the world, you know, I mean, you used to be a Dem- I mean, you still are a Democrat, theoretically, but since we started talking, I don't think I made you a libertarian. I think that maybe it was in you. Maybe your underlying thoughts were there. You know, I have a good friend of mine who's a Shaker Heights liberal, hardcore, wife, hardcore, 
has two sons. One, hardcore. Then the second son mm. is an engineer. I remember when he became an engineer, I'm like, he's an engineer? He's like, yeah. I'm like, engineers tend to not be so dem. He's like, yeah, he's an engineer. Now that son tells them, you brainwashed me with your shaker liberalism. He's a libertarian now. And he resents the fact that his parents brainwashed him. And he joke. it's kind of like a joke about him. He's a libertarian now? He's libertarian. I thought you did. No, the, the son is. Yeah. He went, to, he went to college as a Democrat liberal, like oh, hardcore. Oh, 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 got it, got it, got it. And now he's like, you guys brainwashed me. I mean, it's all a matter of perspective. And I look at that going, okay. And the and, and funny thing is, I think his father's libertarian, doesn't want to admit it. And Because I, I look at that and I, see, I hear the things they say and I'm like, that's very libertarian. Same with you, Seth. I didn't make you a libertarian. You just, I just said things, you're like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. And there are people out there who believe everyone should pay higher taxes. More power to you. Yeah. That's consistent. Great, you are a Democrat. You believe everybody should pay higher taxes. I agree with that. And if you pay all your highest taxes possible, more power to you. It's just the, we have these biases that people aren't willing to acknowledge and aren't willing to sit there and say, well, my bias here is this. My bias here is that. I don't know. Yeah. It's just a confusing thing because you can skew data. As much as we have data, you can skew data to make your point, right? Remember that text I texted you just a few days ago about, Handing everyone 25 grand. Yeah, isn't that funny? Um, I mean, there's something to be said for that. Maybe I should bring it up because I just thought it was so interesting. And it just, I felt like it was like straight from like what you would, you would always tell me. And it's also funny because, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday about, do I, do, you know, I don't like frauds. I don't like phonies, right? Yeah. But then somebody said to me, well, do you consider yourself a fraud or phony? Is that why you don't like them? And I was like, oh, that's a good question. And a part of me does. And a certain element goes, okay, well, what if, I didn't, what if I wasn't born into money? Would I still be successful? Now, of course, my bias says, yeah, because I wasn't a normal kid. I was doing math. I was doing multiplication when I was four and five years old. Like, I wasn't even worried about adding and subtracting. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at going, okay, no, I was different. I always read about investing when I was 11, before we had money, 9, 10, 11. Before we had money, I was reading about investing. So I'm like, okay, there's a little bit different. But at the same token... You read, the, you read what you put over here. Why don't you read it out loud? Well, someone shared this on Twitter. Uh, Zuby, Z-U-B-Y. I don't know who he is. I'm sure he's making a gazillion dollars. He's probably some music guy at Zuby Music. He said, I'm fairly convinced that if you leveled the, playing fo- le- leveled the playing field, in quotes, and gave everyone 25 grand to start, that within five years, most of the people who are currently rich would be rich again, and those who are currently broke would be broke. Not all, but most. You know, there's that... People always, you know, the one common thing I hear about people who don't have money is, well, if I grew up with this, I would be sure. successful. If I had this, I'd be successful. Seth, look at you. Do you make more than you did 12 years ago? Yeah. Way more. Yeah. But do you still go now like, oh, I need more money? And I'm not saying you're not successful. I'm just sitting there saying we all adjust accordingly, right? Oh, I, I, everything you say, I hear you talking to me about like a perspective and, you know, I was with my kids and they... My kids are spoiled brats. I don't think that's true, but go ahead. They basically get whatever they want. But are they are they entitled? Do they feel like they deserve like they're entitled to it? Sometimes, maybe. Okay, well, that's, we all are entitled, by the way. So, by the way, I've met your kid many times. I've never ever even thought to myself these kids are spoiled brats. That's well, my unbiased. Well, we were driving opinion. down the road in the Tesla, you know, all nice <laughs> and cozy, going to a Christmas concert. Everything life is grand, and you pull up on uh, Road 18 there, and there's just like four people standing in the cold waiting for a bus. Yeah. And I was just like, hey, man, every time you want to complain about whatever, like, you got to look at these people. They're standing. Yeah. I'm like, would you ever stand out in the cold for five minutes? They got to do this every single day. And Gio I- said, fuck that. <laughs> what did Gio say to that? Um, or did he say not say anything? I was just, I don't know. I'm just trying to ingrain in their thoughts that, like, uh, they have it really good and be mindful of people who don't. And what does be mindful mean? I mean, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. You know, I struggle with this on a daily basis. Like, uh, like for example, um, when you see someone um, asking for money on the side of the road, what pops into your mind? What what pops in my mind? Yeah. <laughs> tough, yeah. right? What do you mean tough? It's just tough to see people like that at that state for me. Yeah, but you also don't know about... I mean, we own property in Shaker Square, and there was a lady in Shaker Square who always panhandled, and the joke was that everybody knew she had a lot of money. Like, she would literally, like, it was a job to her. You could make 30, 40 grand a year being a panhandler all on cash. Is that really broke? I don't know. And that, that, I'm not just making that up. Like, that's a very well-known thing. 
We just always joke about and it. I've heard a lot car. of people say that. So I'm wondering, like, how many percentage of people, what is the real percentage of people that are out there because they are really, really struggling versus, like... Yeah, I don't know. Or they're just on drugs or... So let's bring it back to Hillary Clinton real quick. And Democrats versus Republican. Go on. People perceive that Republicans, <laughs> quote, unquote, don't want to help people. And Democrats do. That's not true. Yeah. The route of which they take is a different process. Democrats sit there and say, and this is where I get mad at the hypocrisy. Go Democrats on. say, it's the government's responsibility to help people. To which I say to them, name me one thing the government has ever done well. I know you always say that. Ever. I will always rely on that one NASA. for the rest of my life. But even that, how much has NASA w- wasted in money? Which oh, have yeah. they, what, by the way, I shouldn't have said, well, how much have they done efficiently? Mm. Elon Musk and Blue Origin, um, Jeff Bezos' company, have proven that NASA is highly inefficient financially. <laughs> so. Literally, NASA buys a shuttle for the purpose of dumping it in the water later and never reusing it. Yeah. Elon Musk, SpaceX, and Blue, and Blue Origin are sitting there saying, well, why don't we just make one that can just land back on itself and we just reuse it over and over? It costs less for the first one and we reuse it over and over and over again. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is... And it's very well known in the government. They always sit there and say, your budget is determined off how much you spent this year. So if you don't spend your entire budget yeah, this year, what happens to your budget? It goes yeah, lower. Sure. So why would you do that? So there's no incentive there. So that's, people would be surprised how generous the Republicans are. You'll look at their tax returns and the generosity there yeah. is pretty impressive. We just believe in doing it privately. You know, I look at people who are panhandling and I'm like, I've tried to hire people at 10, 12 bucks an hour to pick up trash at my properties and it's impossible. They don't show up. They quit randomly. They, they have issues. It's like, yeah. so when I see that, I go, man, there are more demons in there than just, if they're genuinely out there because they have nothing, there's more demons. And that's where I look at it and say the mental health part of it's very important. But again, let's take private enterprise to sit there and go try to help them and make them better. There, yeah. are, there are better ways to do things than we're doing them today. And if you ever think otherwise, I sit there and say, well, why are we worrying about electric cars then? Isn't, yeah. that the, isn't that the whole purpose of electric cars is to do things better than we're doing them already, right? So I look at that saying, come on, let's just, it's sad, but you know what the great thing is? You're, you're letting your kids see that now going, okay, why are you smiling? Because I just realized that like, um, you really love preheating your car. This dude will preheat his car, folks, for like 45 minutes. I, I looked it up the other day and my car burns a seventh of a gallon of gas in one hour. Seventh, one seventh? Yeah, one seventh of a gallon. So it's not too bad. Um, I told Paul, I texted Paul that I got an update on the Tesla and that now the Tesla will read my calendar and then start preheating my car <laughs> before the time I'm supposed to leave and, for the, for and Don's, the event. And Don's, and Don's just shaking his head in amazement. <laughs> I walk out. To my- <laughs> <laughs> and even then, doesn't your car take like four minutes to get warm? I mean, it's, it's really great. I mean, I know you love so I was like, I was pushing you to get a Tesla because now... I don't even have to warm it up. It warms up itself. So I will say the Tesla SUV is really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like a hundred, at least a hundred, 120 for sure. Yeah. And I'm not interested. I'd rather buy a used and I love, but at the same token, if the car I loved yeah. came in an electric version, that was reasonable. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, dude. Yeah, exactly. It's going to mu- happen. Mustang. Well, it's funny. So a friend of mine texted me the other day and said, Hey, I want to buy this lot in your neighborhood, but it's on the freeway. I'm a little concerned about that. You know, I said to him, uh, 10 years from now, how many cars are going to have engines going mm, down the freeway? He's like, oh, good point. I'm like, don't worry about that. To me, that's a good play. Go buy the lot in the freeway because sure. in 10, 20 years, no one's going to have engines in their cars anyhow. It's all going to be, your car is scary because I have no idea when it's on and when you're moving or not. Neither do people who are walking out in front of me. <laughs> exactly. You can't hear shit. I know. I well, love you. I love your I love your car and what it can do. I just, you know, I, the only thing I don't like about your car is, when you don't press the gas, it like literally comes to a screeching halt almost. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, you can, you can adjust that, by the way. Okay. Why don't you then? I like it. Why do you like it? I just don't touch the brakes. I, I have one pedal. Like, literally, you don't have to touch the brakes. You can go from 60 to zero and not touch the brakes. It just gears down and then lock. It's really fucking rad. Are there gears? No, I'm just no. It just <laughs> I was just of, say I thought there was. It's just and like then there's natural, no gears. It's just like a natural the verb best, of the, like gearing down. I know, but the funny thing is, like, I remember you telling me. You're like, well, yeah, these cars are super fat. It's like an electric drill. It just goes from zero to full. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's great. I think electric cars are wonderful. I think solar panels are wonderful. But you got to remember, we got to make it fine. We can't just do it based on, hey, your responsibility is to do this. No, my responsibility is to do what's best for my investors. I was watching, uh, yeah, well. I want solar panels in Mexico so bad, but I don't think the cost effectiveness is there yet. Oh, my God. They would get, yeah, dude, you get so much. 
Our biggest bill is our electric bill. Wow, that would that would yeah those those roofs get fried all day. Oh yeah, there's 350 days a year of sunlight in Mexico Manzanillo. Why would I not have solar panels on there? We got to document that if they put them in. Yeah, but getting them installed down there might be tough, right? Well, that store's looking into it now. I'll be darned. Thanks for joining us on the Learn From Us podcast. As always, insights from Paul and Seth, my leader. My <laughs> FYI, um, for everybody out there who I'm friends with who texts me about episodes. I don't remember anything. We are like literally seven weeks behind on posting these things, which is a wonderful thing because it shows how much content we have. But when you text me and go, LOL, what you said about blah, 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 I'm like, what are you talking about? I know. We need to get to, I think if Don can be our producer in the future, we need to get to uh, doing this live and he can camera switch. <clears throat> he can camera switch back and forth with like a switcher. And we can, we can, we can stream this live. And then well, we Don is kind of becoming our producer now because Tim is too busy with dynasty owner, but he's um, so handsome too, but we're, we're trying to get, um, we're, we're trying to, we're going to start our goal for 2020 is to, to really grow the uh, YouTube, uh, uh, channel because we, uh, we see a lot of other people on YouTube doing really well. And, uh, Mike Salone has really motivated us to work on that. DJ access in Columbus, DJ A X C S S access. Love you, Mike. Bye. See you guys.